Hello! For today I have a special surprise. I've got a real fan letter with a question for me, so I have been told. So I thought I will make a tutorial out of answering the question. And here we go. Let's read it together. I wonder what the question will be. Dear Dr. Weisenheimer, I'm Professor Johnson from Harvard University. Ah, a fellow colleague. By coincidence. I came across your tutorial. While watching it, one question came to my mind. Please be so kind to satisfy my curiosity. It will be my honor to help my fellow scientist from Harvard. Really, that's an honor for me. Um, and is your doctor title from a real university? And if so, how much did you pay for it? Very interesting question. I think what Professor Johnson is really wants to ask is what is a Mandel box? Maybe Professor Johnson watched the last history issue where this amazing object was introduced. Its main idea bases on a folding operation, like I do here with this paper. When we fold it once and cut something out, <coughs> and fold it twice and cut some more out and look what we have done here we see that operations on a folded piece of paper happens on each layer of the fold at the same time the folding operation is essential for the mandel box now let's take a look at the exact mathematical definition and examine the formula. Like the Mandelbrot set, a Mandel box is calculated by applying a formula repeatedly to every point in space. A point is part of a Mandel box if it does not escape to infinity. It replaces the Mandelbrot equation z equals z squared plus z with this formula. The discoverer, Tom Lowell, explains the idea behind the formula. According to Louis Weil's theorem from 1850, shape-preserving operations are rotations, translations, scale, reflections and inversions. The formula unites all those possible transformations elegantly. Like the Mandelbrot formula, it consists of rotation, scaling and translation but it also includes the inversion and reflection as additional operations. Now we are going to look at each part of the formula before we examine their behavior in a combined method. The box fold operation folds the space at a folding break around an axis. First the folding at the x-axis is performed, followed by the folding of the y-axis. The fear fold is applying an inversion to all points within a certain radius. The scaling contains rotation as well. Here we see a scaling of negative 2 and a rotation by 180 degree. The last transformation is the translation. We have seen the transformations that make up the Mandel box. All of those transformations are easily convertible to 3D. But for visualizing the iteration process, we continue using the 2D variants of it. I keep unfolding the letter, and you examine the standard Mandel box iteration with its default parameters. This is what the default Mandel box looks like in 3D. This is a two-dimensional slice of the Mandel box XY plane. Watch the iteration process. Now the coordinate center represents the zero location. It is the center of the whole Mandel box. Every point is starting from the zero location because the Mandelbrot method is applied. 
This is why the grid is still empty. Although the grid is three-dimensional, everything will happen on the plane. We use the perspective for a wider and more spectacular view. Every movement you see on the z-axis only, rep only represents the movement distance on the plane. The grid is divided into squares of size 1 and concentric circles. We have marked three circles. The inner and smallest circle is a unit circle. This is where most of the action takes place. The second circle is just for orientation and the biggest outer circle is a bailout radius. Points leaving this radius are considered divergent. They are the ones we have seen marked in colors before. The first iteration has zero for its initial values for every point. Now the last transformation, the addition takes place. Finally, the points become observable. These points move around during the iteration process. During this process, some of these points leave the bailout radius. Points that left the ra bailout radius are marked in a color. The different colors indicate in which iteration that happened. This is how the colorful image from our Mandelbox plane arises. After this, the bailout test is performed. Since the corners lie outside the bailout radius, we got our first colored points. These blue points are the starting positions of the corners that just got cut off by the bailout radius. And the image begins to form right now. The first transformation is a box fold. The plane is folded twice, just like a letter, but on both axes one after another. Now the circle fold is perfectly visible. Usually this transformation is called ball fold, but since we only observe two dimensions, we call it circle fold. The circle fold inverses the points with distance above 0.5 and lower 1 to the center to the area from 1 to 2. And the points with a distance lower or equal 0.5 become scaled by a factor 4. Three-fourths of these points become folded upon the points between 1 and 2. And after that a scaling of 2 is performed. A scaling of 2 increases the radius from 2 to 4. Now the addition is repeated as in the first iteration. The addition adds a different value for every point. The points are being shifted in all equally divided. Because of the box fold earlier on, several points lie on top of each other. This becomes observable as these points move in four different directions. In the following iterations, this transformation cannot be followed so easily anymore because of the increased complexity. This demonstrates nicely why the addition transformation is the one most responsible for the chaotic patterns. We fast forward to the end of the iteration process, watching the second last iteration perform, finalizing the image. The whole process with 15 iterations is available with Dr. Weisenheimer's comments in the spin-off parts of this issue. The folding operation on both axes.
the scaling of 2. The addition is performed increasing the chaos. That was impressive, seeing the transformations in action. <coughs> Let me show you the special corner of the negative 1.5 model box, as has been introduced in the show of the Keeper of the Chaos. This area of the model box is crowded with Apollonian gaskets. Let us now examine what leads to these structures by visualizing the iteration process of a centered Apollonian gasket. Remember that bringing up a negative scaling value now introduces a rotation by 180 degree, performing a scaling of just 50%. This is a flyby of the Apollonian corner of the 3D Mandel box. Watch what is happening in the corner of the Mandel box with a negative scale of 1.5. Now we're gonna give you an idea how this Apollonian corner was created. This is the result of 15 iterations. 15 iterations is satisfactory because the output would not be much different using more iterations. These white circle structures are accumulations of points that do not diverge under the iteration. These points move around during the iteration process, but they never leave a certain radius. All the colored points leave the radius just mentioned and seem to diverge towards infinity. The different colors indicate in which iteration that happened. Every iteration consists of five transformations. And now we jump to where the points are located after the 15th iteration step. As we see all the white points jump back to the last iteration, we can observe two different behaviors. We have clusters and flakes. The clusters emerge from the white circle structures. The flakes are coming from the border area of the circle structures and exhibit a chaotic behavior. This behavior reflects on the chaotic or fractal property of the circle structures borders. This behavior reflects on the chaotic or fractal property of the circle structure's borders. Now we see all the clusters gather in a wing shape. This is like a strange attractor, because if a point falls into this area, he never again leaves it. Within this area, eventually every point reaches every location. Though, let's not focus on the strange attractors. How did the process of 15 iterations create this? For that, we start from the beginning. Now the coordinate center represents the zero location. It is the center of the whole Mandelbox. 
not just of the Apollonian corner. Every point is starting from the zero location because the Mandelbrot method is applied. This is why the grid is still empty. Although the grid is three-dimensional, everything will happen on the plane. We use the perspective for a wider and more spectacular view. Every movement you see on the z-axis only represents movement distance on the plane. The grid is divided into squares of size 1 and concentric circles. We have marked three circles. The inner and smallest circle is a unit circle. This is where most of the action takes place. The radius 4 circle is just for orientation and the biggest circle with radius 6 is a bailout radius. Points leaving this radius are considered divergent. They are the ones we have seen marked in colors before. The first iteration has zero for its initial values for every point. And now, the last transformation, the addition takes place. Finally, the points become observable. Though the only points we visualize are the ones from the Apollonian corner, this little square. With the second iteration, the square is folded to the center. But let's forward a little bit. We fast forward to the end of the iteration process, watching the second last iteration perform, finalizing the image. The whole process with 15 iterations is available with Dr. Weisenheimer comments in the spin-off parts of this issue. The scaling of negative 1.5 is performed. The folding operation on both axes is performed again.
I hope you gained some knowledge from this presentation. I have prepared a visualization of the negative 2 Mandel box as well. And this brings us to the end of the show. Send in your questions and I'm glad, glad to answer them personally. So, send your questions on paper. Thank you for watching and see you next time.